What's going on everybody? Welcome to another a team building session here on here with your t Fort Worth Altarius. I am the coach of the Fort Worth Altarius fan and base. If you can before we get started, leave a like at the bottom of this video showing your support. We are here for week two team prep of the UPC, the ultimate Pokemon conference. Um, this week we are currently 0-1 we, with our loss to Davian last week. <laughs> that sucked really bad. But I'm hoping to come back and not to not to do any revenge or anything on anybody. I just I want to win. I really do. I want to win. And so I think we prepared well for this this guy's team. Um, we are up against the Memphis Magnazones this week, and their team consists of Landers Incarnate, Mega Slowbro, Chansey, Sableye, Meloetta, Donphan, Roserade, Darmanitan, Durant, Quagsire, and Bisharp, which is a scary looking team, but our potential team, we did a huge team overhaul with our um, with our free what is it? Free agent transactions. That's what it is. Our free agent transactions, which I traded out. I went and used up all mine in the first week because I needed a good team overhaul, and I made my team a little more threatening. I think we now have Alakazam, Conkeldur, Empoleon, Mega Salamence, Cradily, Florges. Victini, Drapion, Rotomo, Gliscor, and Haxorus. So, right away, we're going to tell you we traded out Mega Altaria for Alakazam, we traded out uh, Genesect for Mega Salamence, and we traded out Hoopa Confined for Florges. I figured we could get some better coverage with that and a lot better results. So, with that, my opponent's team looks absolutely monstrous. That Landers Incarnate is what scares me the most. Because Sheer Force Life Orb with the base, like I think it's like 115 special attack or something like that, it is absolutely insane. It's, it's There's a reason it's an Ubers. But there's also a reason I allowed it, because it's double weak to ice and can be easily walled. So with that, we're going to go ahead and bring up our core. Okay, our core consists of, first off, Emperor of the Empoleon is our special wall again. Because he did such a good job last time, except I actually changed him a little bit. Instead of making him, uh, instead of making him careful nature and giving him knock off and aqua jet, this week I'm giving him scald and ice beam, stealth rock, and defog, so that he can finally be somewhat useful. And gave him uh, a calm nature, max HP, max special defense, four and special attack. Because I don't want to waste that base 111 special attack. I mean, that's that'd be ridiculous. So, Scald, Ice Beam, Stealth Rock, Defog. Scald for burns and for just damage on everything, essentially. Except for that Quagsire, but we, that's what we got Ice Beam for. Ice Beam is for the Quagsire and for the Landorus. It's also for the Rose Rage, should it decide to come in. And yeah, that's, it. that's a good time. Now, our other part of the core... Actually, our second part of the core is our... We have kind of a three-part core here, but there's a reason for it. We've got um, na 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 our bat na 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 batman our Gliscor, who's got our... He's our Toxic Orb Poison Heal set. U-turn, knockoff, tailwind, and earthquake, but he's got... But everyone will expect him to be a physical sweeper, but instead he's going to be our physical wall. With max eight, or 248 HP, max defense, one or four in special attack, four in speed. And this, we can get some switch initiative because no one else on our team has switch initiative right now. We've got U-turn on him so we can get switch initiative. Knock off for taking care of something, especially that Meloetta or that Landris. If we can get a knock off to get rid of that life orb is going to be clutch. Absolutely super useful. We can get rid of the Sableye. We can... Or knock off the Sableye, we can knock off the Rosary, knock off the Dompin. We can literally knock off anything we want to, and it'd be fine. Tailwind is to help us get some speed on our team, because we have a very slow... Like, save for Mega Metagre, or save for Mega Salamence and Alakazam, we have a slow team. So Tailwind will help us boost that a little bit. And then we've got Earthquake for coverage, hitting things like um, Darmanitan and Bisharp, which is the biggest thing that I wanted was Bisharp. And then, so, our third part of the core, though it's not really a core, it's actually a gimmick. 
We're running a gimmicky floor disc. Pedal Pixie the floor disc is here. We are bringing a physical, physically defensive, but there's a catch to this thing. It has almost no attacks. This thing has Misty Terrain, Camouflage, and Nature Power with Flower Veil. Holding the leftovers, it's got max HP, max defense, bold nature, four and special attack. And the reason I'm doing this is because, one, it's base 154 special defense will take care of itself. Second, giving it that max defense actually gives it a really good boost in defense and makes it really bulky. Third off, Misty Terrain and Grassy Terrain change the type of nature power. So, when in Misty Terrain, nature power turns into Moonblast. When in Grassy Terrain, it turns into Energy Ball. Grassy Terrain also boosts the power of grass moves. So, it goes from like base 90 to I think like base, I think it gets like a 20% boost, I'm, I'm tempted to say. So, a 20% boost, so that would be like base at 108. And then Camouflage, if I can Camouflage into Grassy Terrain, we get Stab on that Energy Ball, making it up to base like 162 power essential with I mean give or take I mean it's like I'm not sure if that's exactly how it works but that's how the math sounds so either way it's completely ridiculous what this thing can do um, we're giving it grassy terrain because and camouflage because if we can get grassy terrain and camouflage off then one grassy terrain prevents um Grassy terrain prevents uh, or helps heal up the same amount as leftovers, so we're getting double leftovers heal up. So yeah, it does that. And all grounded po all Pokemon on the ground get that same boost. So um, Toothless and Nana -na, na won't be getting it, but everyone else will, which is reliable recovery for everybody for five turns. Now, Misty terrain prevents statuses. So we can't get burned, we can't get poisoned. I mean, granted, we've got poison on Nana Nana because he's got the Toxic Orb. But, he's also not on the ground. So, and the Dragon's Power, dra while Dragon's Power is dropped against grounded Pokemon, we're not going to be really running Dragon Claw against much of anything unless it's, unless the Misty Terrain is gone. We've got Camo, the reason we have Camouflage, though, and this is where it becomes crazy. Camouflage will turn this into a grass type with the grassy terrain on. If this thing gets that, Flower Veil activates and it can no longer have statuses on itself or it can't have stats dropped. So no defense drops, no, no special attack drops, nothing. This thing cannot be dropped. And then on top of that, getting the grassy terrain boosted and the stab boost nature power energy ball would be crazy disgusting power and it would help us take care of that quagsire which I really really want to do so and I've done the calcs this thing will live almost every hit it has a good chance to live a um a flare blitz from a, li a sheer force life or darmanitan it also has a really good it, it will it can almost it has a really good chance of changing a 2-co Sludge Wave to a 3-co Sludge Wave from a Sheer Force Life Orb Landorus. The only thing I'm scared of is the Bisharp. We have a chance to live in Iron Head, but I don't want to risk that chance. So we could also actually change to Grass-type and get rid of our weakness completely, which makes it completely evil. This thing is a gimmick, like I said, and it's literally meant to be that way so that we can just trip him up, phase him out. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Now we're getting into our attacking core. We're bringing Mega Salamence because why not? He's our he's our tier 1 pick. And he has Dragon Claw, Double Edge, Earthquake, and Flamethrower. We are rocking out with a naive nature because I don't want to drop special attack so we can use Flamethrower. And base 120 attack is nothing to sneeze at, but if you get a minus in it, it drops it like base 126 or 126 attack rather than or special attack rather than 140, which I mean, 14 points matters. So anyway, but what would that do to our special def? Ooh, boost it to 110.
Yeah, it drops it at 126 special attack. Which, I mean, isn't terrible, but I would rather have the special attack output. Because he has no ice types. Which is why I'm bringing both him, both him and Gliscor. Because he has no ice types. And the only Pokemon that can learn ice moves are Mega, Sa Mega Slowbro, Chansey, and um, Quagsire. And anything that wants to run Hidden Power Ice, which I sincerely doubt would be much of anything. So, um, that's him. He's pretty straightforward. Max speed, max physical attack, 4 in HP to give us that odd number. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much else to say about him. Um, then we're going into our other new draft. We're using all three of our new drafts this week, and there's a reason for it. Because we have Sensei the Alakazam here, Focus Ash Magic, magic Guard, with Psy Shock, Dazzling Gleam, Energy Ball, and Counter. I'm bringing a Gen 3 Alakazam this week, just for Counter. Because Focus Ash will be there, especially if we can go out against the Bisharp. Oh, that would be so messed up. Because we can get... First off, we can get ourselves a nice, yummy... If we can get rocks up first, then that'll be set. We'll break every Sash that's out there. Second, he goes for a knockoff. Focus Ash activates before knockoff takes effect. So, we'll live at one, counter kills it. Instantly. Which I would find absolutely amazing. And we wouldn't reveal that unless we knew he was going to go for knockoff. So, that would, that would be that case. He would also want to go for Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch still has priority. I think counter actually counts as an attack, so Sucker Punch would still activate. I mean, we would even still live at 1 HP. Counter it back, and it... Mm, good times. So, our final Pokemon is for cleanup. We have our standard Conkel Hercules the Conkelder, Assault Vest, Guts. Guts is for Scalds from, or Sableye. Scalds or Sableye is what we're going for here. We have Mach Punch, Drain Punch, Knock Off, and Ice Punch. Because we need three things. We need Priority, Reliable Recovery, Knock Off. Knock Off we don't have on anything else on our team, so we need Knock Off on him. Knock Off will do a crazy amount. Did I? Did I put knockoff on him? Oh, I did put knockoff on him. Never mind. I thought we didn't have it. I thought I stuck fling on him instead. <laughs> no, that's my other set I run on this. I usually run acrobatics. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to reveal that. I might bring it to another team some other week. But, anyway. So, we're going to go mock punch for priority. Drain punch for reliable recovery. Knockoff to get rid of every item that I want to. Ice punch to take care of that Landorus. I don't like that Landorus. But... I'm not going to try to focus on it a crazy amount. And the reason being is that because while I know he's going to bring it, it's not going to be a huge threat because a lot of my Pokemon wall him. If he's going to go for a... Oh, excuse me. If he's going to go for a Sludge Wave, we'll go out to, Emperor, to Emperor. If he goes for an Earth Power, go out to Toothless. Goes for Hidden Power Ice, go out to Emperor again. If he goes for... I mean, he could go for just about anything, and we would be okay. Goes for Focus Blast, go out to Petal Pixie. That'd be easy. That'd be easy, easy switch. Um, yeah, there's not much he can do here with Landorus. We have plenty of options here. Now, once again, like I said in my last uh, team prep video, I know it was really laggy, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, I know it cut off really early at the end, too, which really takes me off. But um, what we're planning to do is we're going to start setting it up so that we have a new setup for the, the league, bat league battles. I have a, a, a layout and everything ready. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to predict our opponent's team. Or I'm going to try to predict my opponent's team and see just how close I can get to his lead, see how close I can get to everything on his team. Now, this particular week... I think he is going to lead with one of three Pokemon. He's either going to lead, or actually one of four. I see him leading Sableye because Prankster is evil. Good for he could go for a um, he could go for a knockoff. He could go for a Will O Wisp. He could go for a um, Taunt even. That would be really, really clutch actually if he went for Taunt against my Empoleon. 
I'm thinking I might actually run Mental Herb on my Empoleon just because. I may very well run Mental Herb on my Empoleon. That could be clutch. That could be really, really good. I also failed to mention his his move set. Psy Shock, Dazzling Gleam, Energy Ball, Counter. Counter obviously is there for the Bisharp. Psy Shock is there for the Chansey and for the Meloetta when it does it goes into Pirouette form. Dazzling Gleam is for the Sableye and only for the Sableye. Energy Ball is to counteract that Donfin, that Quagsire. I had to do a decent amount of damage to Landorus, but I mean, he's he's literally here just to counter out that Bisharp. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, forgot about that. So, anyway, done talking about that. So, his lead. I could see him also running U turn on his Landorus and Incarnate and running that and running that as his lead, scouting out what I'm going to do. If he goes for Earth Power, I could predict him to go up for Earth Power. Or I could predict him to go for. I don't know. I could predict him to go for a lot of things. Predict him to go for superpower. Either way, our best option if he goes out into Landorus is to switch into Toothless. I think that would be our best bet. Because I'm. I'm going to go ahead and say that I think his Landers Incarnate set will be Earth Power, Sludge Wave, U-Turn, and either Super Power or Hidden Power, um, Ice. But I think that he will more than likely run, uh, or Rock Slide. Ooh, he could run Rock Slide. I think actually our best bet would be to go out into our Gliscor to predict that one. Because that way he could take he could easily take the Sludge Wave. If he gets poisoned, it's even better because we get poison heal damage and it doesn't really matter what else happens after that. Um, we could set up a Tailwind after that. We could do whatever. Um, as if he goes for Sludge Wave. Earth Power won't be very, won't hit us at all. Rock Slide will do very minimal damage because it's physical and because it's because of rock type. Um, U-turn will do no damage hardly. And so that'd be really good for us. We can just go fire off our own U-turn when he makes a switch and get back in the game for switch initiative. So yeah, I think he's if that's what he, we would do if he led uh if he led Landris incarnate. We would switch if we led Empoleon we would switch into um Switch into Batman or no 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 no. I think that's what we do there. Now if he leads with Chansey, really straight away for if he if he leads Chansey, I would predict him to go for a Thunder Wave. So we could actually go out and once again into Gliscor. Predicting that. I'm I actually think I'm gonna stick the mental herb on here. Predicting either the um Sableye to go for predicting the Sableye to go for taunt, I think. That would that would be my prediction. His Sableye will probably go for taunt against my Empoleon. If that's the case, we need something to be we need it so we can be able to set up stealth rocks. That'd be awesome, actually. I think we should do that. Because while it's it's really situational, I think I could see him doing it. If he leads his Sableye, that would be the best. That would be what we would have to do. Now, we could... I don't... Th if he's leading his Sableye, I can almost guarantee he's going to go for either Will-O-Wisp, or he could go for... um. Or he would go for taunt. So I think a mental herb is the best thing to go for here. Uh, 
Okay, so if he leads with the Mega Slow Bro, however, we would 100% have to go out into our. Oh, excuse me. We would 100% have to go out into our. Um, Florida's. Because Florida's walls everything that Slow Bro could ever want to do. Even if he goes for Psy Shock, it doesn't matter. It won't do that much to us. Because we're max physical defense. I think that's what we would do. And then we could go for a um, a grassy terrain. Then we could go for go for a nature power after that. Get some health get some health back. I think that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna lead Empoleon, I think, regardless. If he leads the Donfin, however, which I sincerely doubt that he will. Um, but yeah, I could see him doing that maybe it's not quite as popular a lead just because it's really easy for me to counter it I could easily switch out into um actually I could stay in and go for scalds I could go for ice beam I'd rather go for scald though honestly it could get a burn off I think I'll probably die too if I got a burn off I'm tempted to run aqua jet on this thing instead of defog What's a move on here I won't use? Can you get the fog? Yes, you can. Okay. So because you get the fog, I could very well teach that to you over knockoff. But I don't think that's what I want to do. I, I want to keep this the way it is. Aqua Jet would be really good for priority against... That Donphan, but the Donphan's also got Ice Shard for priority, so it really doesn't make a difference. He could also go for Endeavor, which would be really messed up. If he was going to go for Endeavor, we might as well have just stayed in, I think. I'm going to run a couple calcs later and change some of this if I have to. But that would be only if I needed to, um, it would only be if we can't live in Earthquake from this thing. Which I sincerely doubt that we will. Now, look at that. <laughs> but that's, that's very situational if he leads the Dolphin at all. He even brings the Dolphin. Now, like I said, my prediction for his team, this is going to be the last bit of the, this before I say goodbye. My prediction for his team is Landers Incarnate, Mega Slowbro, Chansey Sableye. I think he's going to bring Bisharp and Quagsire. Either that or Bisharp and um, Darmanitan. He's got a super bulky team, so we have to go kind of offensive. But I'm not going to go super offensive because then we could get easily get stopped. But I think he might fear the Kinkelder and not bring Chansey, but instead bring Meloetta. To which I would say, cool knock off or cool mock punch <laughs> I mean there's not much he can really do to us with the Meloetta because Meloetta is literally walled by our Florges completely it is wow Meloetta is 100% walled by Florges that's crazy but yeah so I think he's going to bring like I said his team 100% I'm going to predict now Landorus Mega Slowbro Sableye Donphan, Roseray, Bisharp. So yeah, Landris Incarnate, Mega Slowbro, Sableye, Donphan, Roseray, Bisharp. I think that's what it's going to be. And we'll plan accordingly. I'm pretty sure I'm going to lead with Emperor, just because no matter what, I want to get rocks up first. I think that would be the best thing to do. And I think that's all. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, leave a like and comment and sub for more. Um, and make sure you support your Fort Worth Altarias in the, in the UPC by commenting down below with the hashtag GoAltariaNights. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And we try to put up as much as we can. And we're going to be putting up more soon because we're actually moving. But I'll explain that later. Thank you guys once again. And I will.